Hello everybody and welcome back to Science Live. We're here again coming from the Creation Education Lab at the Creation Museum in Petersburg, Kentucky. It's a beautiful day outside. The birds are chirping. Yeah. Joined again by Dr. Georgia Purdom. Hello. And she's here to help me. We're going to be talking about the physics of flight today. So you're a expert in flight physics, right? Uh, no. No. So no. <laughs> she'll be with us. She'll teach us a lot about DNA here at the end I'll of the I'll just be shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be uh, following the comments. If you'd like to comment and ask some questions as we go along, I'll try and answer some of those uh, throughout the broadcast and then pick those up at the end. If you were with us on Friday for the live stream, you got to see some amazing things about water and adhesion and cohesion, but it unfortunately didn't make it to being saved. So we'd also like to remind you that this week we're going to be doing a special broadcast where I'm going to get questions from you, the viewers, things that you might think about, um, how does this work? Or mm -hmm. I, I want to understand what makes this process work or how does this thing happen in science? So we're looking for your feedback, ideas that you would like to see displayed. And then on our Friday show this week, I'll be uh, doing some of those. So we'll give a shout out to those listeners and, and uh, give you uh, some insights into those things. You got to try to stump them. Oh. Okay, you got to find ones that stump them. But I have time to research. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's get started. Today our topic is the physics of flight. And when we think about flight, uh, you might think of things around you that fly, okay? Things like airplanes and birds and helicopters and balls and frisbees and all those types of things. Those are all things that can fly through the air. So when we think about physics, in physics we're talking about how things move and the motions of things. So we're going to talk about the basic uh, principles behind the physics of flight today. So as long as men have been alive, they've looked at these birds up in the sky because mm -hmm. birds flying things were created the day before right. humans day on day five, mm -hmm. humans created on day six, and I'm sure they've marveled, marveled at God's creation of these uh, creatures that can fly through the air. Mm -hmm. Things like uh, the pterosaurs that would have oh, been yeah. originally created and bats and uh, birds and all of these amazing creatures that can fly. And how many of you have ever wanted to be able to fly? <laughs> That's probably the number one superpower, yes, so to if speak, we had a that people would like. Yeah, yeah. People would like that. But to be able to soar up above a forest mm -hmm. or a lake and, and see all the things that are going on there would be amazing and to feel all of those effects. Well, um, the modern concept of flight that we think about with airplanes and everything got kicked off in really the late 1800s. There was a big race for people in Europe and in uh, America fighting to get the first powered flight. Now there had been lots of attempts at gliders, even think about to uh, guys like Leonardo da Vinci. He had designed concepts of flying machines and gliding mm -hmm. machines. We don't know if we ever made them work because we don't have any video evidence of, of those things. Um, but people have been seeking after this. And it was in 1903 that the Wright brothers in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, on the beach there, made the first powered flight with a, with a person on the aircraft. And so we've been flying for a little over 100 years and we've done some amazing things. But how did they figure out how to make things fly? Well, the way they did it is by looking at God's creation. Mm -hmm. So there's a special word we use when people look at God's creation and they create things based on what God has already designed. We call it biomimicry. Mm -hmm. right, so we're biology mimicry. So we're mimicking the creations that God has already done. So we're thinking God's thoughts right. after him. And there's a sense. lot of inventions that have been you know, discovered basically by just looking at these things mm -hmm. and trying to, and even in biology, we see this a lot, you know, even like the small little fruit fly, right? It's yeah. so tiny and yet it can fly all these places. And so they try to design tiny little robots that can do the same, yes. you know, and, mm -hmm. and they're still perfecting it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to, it's hard to, um, do um, artificially what God designed naturally, so yeah. to speak. So he's, he's made these, he has all knowledge and all intelligence and all power right. to create these things. Mm -hmm. And we are limited in that. We're made in God's image, but we've, we've got an opportunity to, to create after him and use the, pr the principles of his creation that he's already created to design more things and technology. So let's talk about flight real quick. So if we think about um, the basic idea, if you look at the wing of a bird, I've got these two, two wing shapes here. The bottom one 
I've cut so that both of the pieces are the same length. And you can see that each of these edges comes across here, and it's basically the same length. And if air were to move across here over the top and under the bottom, it would move at the same speed because both of these are the same length. They're, and so the speed would be the same if they're moving. On this wing, we've got a different structure. I've folded the top piece longer than the bottom, and so air that moves over the top, it takes it longer to go this, this route over the top because it's a greater distance and less time to move down here. So what we get is we get a high pressure system here in the bottom and a low pressure system up here, and that causes lift. Okay? Everything in nature tries to go from high to low. That's just a principle of physics. Mm -hmm. If I hold this ball up high, it will want to drop and seek its lowest point. That's just the way things work. So we can demonstrate that using this little fan right here. So Dr. Purdom's gonna help me out and we are going to show you how this lift system works using a piece of paper. So we're gonna try to position this piece of paper so that the air flowing over the bottom is moving faster because it's gotta go, like on this wing, it's gotta go a longer distance in the same amount of time, so it's gotta move faster. And on the bottom, it's moving slower that should create lift so that the paper will lift up. So we'll turn the fan on here, bring it down just a little bit, and you can see the paper is curling upward okay, by the lift that's being created. If we move it up to the middle, it's gonna go pretty much flat, the weight of the paper is holding it down. If we move it up to the top, it's gonna suck it down because the pressure differential is different. So when we wanna create a wing and create lift, uh, get in there. <laughs> down just a touch on your side. There we go. We can get that lift created because the air moving across the top is going faster than the air under the bottom side. And so that creates a high pressure system here, a low pressure system here, and that pushes everything up. So that's how a plane flying through the air creates lift on its wings. And the same thing with a bird as it's flying and gliding through the air. That's what someone just said. They said, this is awesome. My 10 year old just learned about lift and how the airflow works to help birds fly. Yeah, mm -hmm. so a bird's wing basically has this structure. So the Wright brothers and others imitated this curve on top and the flat on the bottom. They actually made a wing that was adjustable so they could flex mm -hmm. the wing. They had paddles that allowed them to control all of those things uh, to create more lift and to, to create climb. So we think about four principal forces when we're thinking about flight. So a force is something that adds energy and, and motion to something. So lift is the force that's created by the wing and that pushes everything up. So that's a force exerting with the green arrow here, moving everything up. Weight is what gravity's doing, pulling the airplane down. So lift and weight are acting opposite to one another. If you want to climb up in the air, you have to have more lift than weight. And if you want to go down, you have to decrease your lift so that gravity is pulling you down with more weight. Okay, the, the directional forces that take us forward and backward, thrust is created either by a propeller in the front or by jets on the wings or on the tail and other positions. And that's pushing us forward. So that's the force that propels us forward. And then drag is all of the resistance of the air. As air is flowing past, uh, it creates drag, just like if you held your hand out the window. If you're driving along, you hold your hand out flat, it's gonna create a lot of force as the air particles are smashing into it. If you hold your down, hand down flat, it's actually gonna create um, less drag because the wind can move around it more easily. So we try to create things, and we call that aerodynamics, to try and create things that move in these gentle ways. Uh, and decrease the amount of drag, increase the amount of thrust. All of those different forces are going on all the time while you're flying in an airplane. And it applies too, even if you think about with like cars and other things that we try to make more aerodynamic, so mm -hmm. to speak. And not that they're gonna fly, obviously, <laughs> but we want the air, if the air goes over them better, if you look at the cars from the 50s, they were very boxy. But if you look at the cars today, with each generation, it seems like they get smoother and more streamlined mm -hmm. because it's trying to basically allow the air to go over the car 
see this is the biologist talking about this. <laughs> they are to go over the car better so it can go through the air better. Yeah, so, to so speak. It, it creates less drag. Right. So that makes the engine perform more efficiently. It takes less fuel. Right. You may have seen semi trucks with these tail fins mm -hmm. on them and skirts underneath the bottom that they've begun doing in the last 10 years yeah. or so. Mm -hmm. And that it makes them more efficient so that we're using our resources that God's given right. us better. Mm -hmm. We're using fewer resources, creating less pollution and honoring God in, in uh, doing that and taking care of his creation. So there are lots of things around you that are based on this idea of flight. So the question that we started the show off with in the tagline is, how does this big metal tube fly <laughs> through the air? So if you think about a giant jet like a 747 or something, mm -hmm. Um, we live right near the airport, so right. we see those things yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. That wing shape creating lift and the thrust of the engines moving forward. So we've got lift being created by the wing. We've got thrust being created by the jet engines, and that allows the airplane to fly. All right? You guys can do all of these types of things and simulate these things. I'm sure you've all made paper airplanes. Yeah. Okay? So if we think about a paper airplane, we have lift created by the wings a little bit. Now a paper airplane is more like a glider because you really don't have power mm -hmm. sustaining it. The thrust would come from you throwing it and then the aerodynamic shape would come from how sleek the, the mm -hmm. plane is. So I would expect this plane to fly a little further because it would have less drag than this one. This one has a downward wing shape, so that might cause it to lift a little more or if it has too heavy of a nose, it might make it crash. Right. So you can experiment with all types of different shapes. Okay, Start with a, a basic fold and then do different wing shapes and see how you can get them to fly. You could put a paper clip on the end yeah. and see what happens Try or at other paper places. Clips. Oh, yeah. there we go. Put a paper clip in different places and see if you can get the forces to balance out. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of cool things you can do at home to test flight and those types of things. Somebody said, flight is a miracle, in-flight meals are sin. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some good in-flight meals in Zimbabwe. I have too. The worst one, we were flying back from Albania, and it was a the German airline Lufthansa, uh -huh. and I, I got meatballs. So I thought that sounded good, uh -huh. and I bit into this meatball, and a hot explosion of mustard, and I almost threw up. I hate mustard. It was terrible. <laughs> the worst. Now there's something wrong with him. <laughs> All right. Um, another fun things that you might be able to do as a family. This is something my family has been doing for years. Is throwing frisbees. So if you think about a frisbee, the way that it's shaped, we basically have a wing structure because the top of it is shaped very much like this, where we have a flat bottom and a curve coming over the top. And as that flies through the air, it's going to generate lift. So you can throw discs mm -hmm. and frisbees through the air and get them to fly in different ways. Now, the funnest thing about discs. So oh, here we go. Here okay, we go. get ready. <laughs> this is this is one of my passions that I talk about all the time. I played the game disc golf or frisbee golf, as some people call it. So you may have seen chain baskets out in your local parks mm -hmm. and things. Um, right now, in our area, some of the parks are under quarantine, so they're asking people not to do these things. But if it's appropriate in your area, uh, you could get out in small groups um, and play this game we call disc golf. So the idea is just like golf, you throw a disc and it flies and lands and then you get you count the number of strokes so you get it inside the basket. But you'll notice there are a bunch of different profiles to these discs. Okay? This disc over here has a very thin profile, so we might say it's very aerodynamic. This one's a little bit thicker. It's got a little of a curve here on the edge. And then this one we'd say is very blunt. Okay? So we've got a blunt edge, a medium edge, and a really sharp edge. So this one is going to fly through the air much more efficiently. So it's called a driver. It's meant to go long distances. This is a mid-range. It's got a medium profile, so it's going to fly through the air pretty good. And this little lip under here helps to create some of the lift and change those flight properties. And then this one is a putter or a short-range thrower, and it's got a very flat edge. Some putters even have a totally flat edge. So all of these different discs have different wings that are going to help them fly in different ways. So I take advantage of all of these and the different flight properties of the discs, the way that they're beveled underneath, the way they're domed or flat on top, and all of those things can create amazing flight patterns in the hands of a skilled thrower. Exactly. Which I don't claim to be, but <laughs> to, enjoy, He's actually really to enjoy throwing those things. <laughs> um, 
so a great activity you could get out and enjoy with your family generally free in local parks and things but again please abide by the restrictions that your governments have in place okay we have some questions okay. so, all right um david 13 asked do you have do you have to have aerodynamics in space since there isn't air okay there is virtually no air in space so if we're flying through space Theoretically, we could get an object to move through space and there's not going to be any resistance on right. it. So if you think about a satellite or something that's moving around uh, there, we don't have to worry about aerodynamics mm -hmm. as much. But the rocket that I'm launching that satellite right. on has to. <laughs> has to have those aerodynamic properties to get out of the Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then if we're re-entering an atmosphere, right. we want to have that, those same properties. So if you think of the space shuttle, which used to fly, it looked basically like, mm -hmm. an, airplane. like an airplane. It was a big glider. And it, those, those uh, wings and those flight characteristics allowed it to glide in and land. And if you think about flying in an airplane, when you're landing, you're basically doing a controlled fall. So the pilot is, <laughs> back to these, these forces, the pilot is reducing the amount of lift, and so the weight of the aircraft is, is uh, pulling it down, and the weight is greater than the lift, so it's a controlled fall as an airplane comes down. So the next time you're flying, just think when you're landing, oh, we're falling in a controlled manner. And hopefully it doesn't turn into an uncontrolled fall. That's when we have problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, McKenna, age 10, wants to know, what about the Frisbees with holes in them? Ah, okay. Different discs of all types of shapes will have different flight properties. Uh, there are some discs. In disc golf, we say a disc is stable if when I throw it, it tends to turn to the left. It's understable if it tends to turn to the right. Um, putting holes or you'll see the like aerobi discs that just have a big hole in the middle and they're basically just a ring around the outside. Mm -hmm. All of them will have different flight characteristics that'll increase or decrease their aerodynamic properties and the way that they create lift and drag and all of those things. Okay, mm -hmm. someone else wants to know why does the frisbee curve when you throw it? Ah, okay. It curves when we throw it because when we throw a disc, we usually rotate our disc the thrust that we're generating, we're generating by pushing forward and then we cause the disc to rotate. And so air that it's encountering is getting pushed off to the side and it's, it's causing friction on this side. So it causes more friction. So one side of the disc is actually pushing against the wind differently because of the rotation and that's going to force it to change. If you throw left-handed, the rotation is the opposite way and it will actually turn the other direction. So that is due to the rotation of the disc causes it to turn. Mm -hmm. um, the last one is what makes the Frisbee fly? What makes it fly are the two forces that you're going to add to it. Um, basically, the thrust is what we, right. when we move our arm, we're using the chemical energy in our muscles to produce um, mechanical energy that's changing into the disc, it's transferring from our hand into the disc. Mechanical energy is giving us thrust, and then the curve on the bottom and the top, the differential between those is creating lift, mm -hmm. just like we saw with the wing. So the top of it is curved up, and the bottom is flatter, and that creates lift. So the two forces are lift, lifting it up through the shape, and thrust as we throw it forward. Okay, I got another good one. So. Okay. Uh, do these principles apply to pitching in baseball? Ah, so here's <laughs> a ball, okay? Same basic idea. If I look at this ball, it's more like this flat wing. It's the same on both sides. It doesn't have a difference on one mm -hmm. side. So the air flows around it equally. So if I want to launch a baseball or something, I have to add lift by putting a direction up. So it's a mechanical force. It's not created by the air differential. But you can do things like throw splitters or knuckleballs that cause the ball to spin in different ways. And we call this the Magnus effect. And because the ball is spinning, just like when the disc is spinning when we throw it, it creates a differential drag and that will cause the ball to curve. So if the ball's rotating, it will curve and come down and that's how we throw pitches we call sliders and knuckleballs and those types of things. But in general, you have to make the ball twist to make that happen. So it's not the same uh, principles of flight that we think about with right. lift and, and thrust, lift and weight in those areas. Mm -hmm.
Do we have time for any more? Let, let's get one more question. Okay, one sure. more. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have gravity, would the ball or the frisbee stay in motion? Um, if we didn't have gravity, we wouldn't have an atmosphere. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we couldn't breathe. We'd die. No. Um, all of those things. <laughs> okay, but theoretical. If we if we didn't have any gravity pulling it down, then we wouldn't have air pressure, right. which wouldn't create any air. So all the air would float away from the earth. Right. And so without gravity, you can't have an atmosphere and then you can't have aerodynamics because right. you don't have any air. Right. But if we were in space and we were to uh, throw a ball in space, it would potentially continue to travel for right. long ways. Right. But space is in a true vacuum and there are particles and things that would interact with it okay. and gravity. Mm -hmm. Great. So lots of good questions on here. Lots of people saying they're joining us. They start out their day with this. That's their great. School day. So we're glad to be keep bringing these to you. And don't forget that we have programs throughout the day. We'll have uh, one at noon today, as well as three and seven, uh, different with animals and some other behind the scenes types of things. Also, be sure to check out our Easter event. Okay, this coming uh, Friday through Sunday, we're going to have a lot of special live streams on those days. So make sure you check our website for more information on that. Mm -hmm. All right. We hope you learned a little bit about how we can look at what God has created and study it and understand more about him and that you'll get out and enjoy God's creation. And with that, have a blessed day.